pleasure to be here. I have been working for three and a half years uh, following my graduation in Oita Prefecture, uh, the south of Japan. And I mainly give medical care to Wagyu. Today's topic is about the cow's deformity. On that note, I will begin my presentation. Before I had experienced this case, I was sure that all cases of deformity would have a poor prognosis. In this case, we had to euthanize the animal under general anesthesia, but some can survive and even develop and grow. Maningo cell is classified as cranial bifidum. It is a congenital defect that results from focal failure of neural tube closure during embryogenesis. It has been assumed to be influenced by hereditary factors, environmental factors, folate deficiency in mother, and so on. In some cases, the space of head to spinal cord will be divided into two areas. Others would have no brain. The exact instance in Japan is unknown, but it is so to be rare. We reveal some information about human mining of cell as below. Mostly in human cases, it occurs in the posterior area. But in calves, it more commonly appears in the frontal area. Approximately 60 to 70% can grow up normally. However, it's impossible to survive if they have the defect of meninges or skin because it means no brain. Also, if the hole is covered with skin, they don't require urgent surgical treatment. Let's look at the patient's information. A one-day-old one male Japanese black cow weighing about 20 kilograms, who was born 15 years earlier, had a large swelling in the frontal region of his head from birth, which was the same size as a human baby's head. The farmer requested a medical examination because he couldn't stand up. There were three physical findings. The first finding is obesotonus. From the animal's posture, we were certain of an abnormality of forebrain to brainstem. His left foreleg tended to extend. On the contrary, his right one moved only slightly and tended to curve. This indicated an abnormality of the right vestibular area. An additional finding of head rotation to the right further supported this diagnosis. The third major finding was nystagmus on both sides. In this case, the eyes were moving slowly to the right and going back to the left quickly. So the slow phase is in accordance with the side of abnormal brain. This also supported the existence of an abnormality of the right vestibular area. From upper three findings, we were sure of widespread severe abnormalities of brain. And that due palpation, he felt discomfort. The cranial bone seemed to lose its continuity. We carry out an ultrasonographic exam with a linear profile of reading. The yellow dot is a reference point. Then we recognize reflections from the bony protrusion. And the helmet sac moved in waves and it was filled with fluid and suspended particles. But we couldn't find out the condition inside the brain in detail and couldn't confirm the diagnosis completely using only this exam. With the aim of reducing intracorneal pressure, I incised the skin by three millimeters and evacuated about two liters of liquid under sterile. And then I sutured it carefully using three horizontal mattress stitches. I decided to monitor until the next day at the farmer's request. On the next day, there was a reaccumulation of fluid. 
these findings indicated that there were extensive brain abnormalities or hy brain hyperplasia, so we carried out euthanization under anesthesia. I will show you the autopsy findings. The helmet sac composed of skin from the head to the nose was 16 centimeters wide and 13 centimeters high. The helmet sac was filled with 400 milliliters of red tinged CSF. The frontal bone had a hole which had a diameter of 5 centimeters, and the bony protrusion was 3 centimeters long, and the cranial cavity was narrow. Sections of brain were unclear and the volume was quite small, and that would be related to the narrow cranial cavity. Also, the medulla oblongata was very thin. The sections names that we predicted are, as you see, these findings match with anti-mortem physical ones. No joints, the main organs are abnormal except slight hypremia of spinal cord. Result, we cultured only day two CSF. Day one was clear. On the contrary, day two was dark red and cloudy. We detected one kind of soil bacteria from day two CSF. Next is a histological examination. The left picture shows the meninges, and the right one shows the meninges and serum. The healthy skin was bleeding between the dermis and subcutaneous tissues. Deposition of fibrin and infiltration of inflammatory cell in the meninges. These findings mean iatrogenic acute bacterial meningitis after incision of the healthy sac. Even though correct disinfection technique was used, the infection is likely to have been either intra or postoperative. Many studies claim that there is no danger with performing a needle aspiration, but in my opinion, both the needle aspiration and the incision are contraindicated due to the, the increased risk of infection caused by the cough line position on the ground. Furthermore, both viral and parasitic tests relating to abnormal labor using blood samples of the parent who had been injected with vaccine and child were negative. We didn't find any evidence of viral infection listed on this slide, and no spora as the cause of deformity. By the mantle and exclusion, I diagnosed this call with cell along with brain hypoplasia. I concluded that dysrophism of rostral neuropod during embryogenesis resulted in hyperplasia of frog brain, and it led to hydrocephalus called logically. Next, I'd like to share some further thoughts on this case. A cop with severe neurological symptoms must be euthanized in accordance with animal welfare. However, when we uncover the deformity, it is very important to evaluate neurological signs and use diagnostic imaging properly in terms of prognosis, especially the princess or absence of a hydrocephalus. If the animal is judged to be relatively my case without either probably standing in the feeding or secondary or called hydrocephalus, then it's suitable for surgical treatment. First, when we see an animal suspected with deformity, we have to check some points by following the neurological exam forms. Red words coincided with your case. We can find forms on the internet. We couldn't take any higher quality pictures by using such as convex echo or CT. The two reasons are that we had no photographic device except echo with a, with a linear profile breathing at my clinic, and no, no one could go to deliver him to the university because it would take four hours to go just halfway by car. We can differentiate between cell and encephalomeningocell accurately 
only by palpation, radiographic, and ultrasonographic exams. However, CT imaging is very effective for diagnosis. Echo and X-ray images show just the accumulation of CSF. When viewing the CT image, we can observe proptosis of cerebrum. So this picture is diagnostic for encephalomeningo cell of cranial bifidum. Some reports show successful surgical repairs after operation. The points were emphasized as thick characters. In number four report, to avoid infection due to trauma, they close the hole by using hydricus appetite made into artificial bone like a patch. When we analyzed these reports, we observed some facts. How old he or she was, quantity of fluid accumulated, diameter of hole made for detection. Three things are not related with prognosis of meningo cell and whether infectious or not is more significant than presence of bleeding. The most important thing is that even one neurological sign indicates poor prognosis. Conclusion, whenever we encounter a deformity, we should carry out steps one and two. And if there is a possibility of survival, like this call, who can stand and has no neurological signs, I definitely recommend the surgical repair. An increased number of cases would contribute to development of bovine neuro internal medicine and health plastic surgery. A Japanese black color are being traded at high prices. It's very meaningful for a farmer if even one can survive. Thank you all for your time and special thanks to my Colleague, Dr. Yamamoto, we have been through a we have been a challenge through a challenging time, as we were only two members of staff assigned to this clinic last year. I'm ex extremely grateful. Thank you very much. Sure.